Good day and thank you for joining CivilNet. The 16th meeting of eu armenia Parliamentary Cooperation Committee concluded yesterday in Strasbourg. The Armenian National Assembly was present there with a seven-member delegation headed by Sambel Fermanian. And today we'll be speaking with Bedo Demirjan. Mr. Demirjan is the Public Relations and Communications Officer at the European Armenian, Armenian Federation for Justice and Democracy. Mr. Demirjan, good day and thank you for joining CivilNet. No. And my first question is, Armenia-EU relations entered a gray area after 2013, and being at the uh, assembly in Stras Strasbourg, how, what do you think? Have we started where we left off, or are these negotiations under a new light, under new conditions? Yes, uh, you're somehow right that uh, after 2013, September, the EU-Armenia relations uh, entered a gray area. Uh, but since uh, day one, the Republic of Armenia uh, always stressed and mentioned that, yes, we are taking a new international uh, obligation, we are entering a new international alliance, but we will never give up our EU aspirations. We will continue with the, our European colleagues, with the European Union, to go on uh, with a new renegotiated EU-Armenia deal. So after uh, some time, which both parties, the EU and Armenia, uh, made very clear that uh, they really want to go on a partnership, um, and they made clear that uh, they will uh, go on, and both parties started, re started new negotiations regarding their future uh, relations and uh, cooperation. And uh, we are very glad uh, to see these days, especially since October 2015 up to yesterday, where the new EU-Armenia relations have taken uh, a, new, a new dynamic uh, with the very high level uh, bilateral uh, meetings and uh, with the launch of the new negotiations between EU and Armenia in uh, December 4, 2015 where uh, Republic of Armenia Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Edward Nalbandian, was in Brussels. Uh, he met uh, the EU Chief for Foreign Affairs, uh, Federica Mogherini, and they uh, signed the relaunching or the new launching of the new EU-Armenia uh, framework. Uh, and in continuation uh, to this, uh, we have uh, the EU Parliamentary uh, Cooperation Committee and the Republic of Armenia Parliamentary uh, delegation in Strasbourg uh, yesterday concluding the negotiations, the parliamentary cooperation and uh, having the joint uh, statement. But I want to stress that the parliamentary cooperation between the European Union Parliament, of course, and the Republic of Armenia National Assembly never ceased to cooperate. So Armenia was still a member of the Euronest Parliamentary Association and uh, this uh, 16th uh, parliamentary cooperation, which concluded yesterday, uh, we had uh, two previous uh, meetings, one in Armenia and one in uh, Strasbourg uh, as well. So the parliamentary cooperation was always there, but on a state to European Union, the bilateral relations, uh, they have a new dynamics now, and we're hopeful that it will go on towards uh, the end. And under this new light, what, was the, what were the main subjects that were discussed? What, what, what were... EU expectations from Armenia? Yes, uh, the main uh, subject uh, yesterday and the day before during the Parliamentary Cooperation Committee uh, where that uh, EU, uh, where that uh, Armenia is really looking forward to cooperate with the European Union and that uh, Armenia wants uh, to integrate as much as possible with the European Union, having in mind the new uh, uh, the new international commitment of Armenia, which is a member of the European, uh, sorry, with the Eurasian Economic Union. And uh, in this uh, sense, I must uh, say that we as European Armenian Federation, uh, since uh, day one, since 2013, September, uh, we were uh, trying to explain to, uh, to make the Europeans understand that why Armenia had to take uh, that decision uh, and why it was a necessity out of the Armenian uh, security, necessity to have this uh, uh, choice of joining the Eurasian Economic Union. 
But nevertheless, Armenia would always and always mention that we are going on with these uh, negotiations. And we were trying to explain, to show, to make them realize that the Armenian side would go on despite uh, being a member of the Eurasian Economic Union. So we're really glad to see that uh, this understanding was uh, stressed as well yesterday in Strasbourg in the joint uh, statement. Armenia has made very clear that uh, it really wants to go on with the negotiations, with the democratic process, with all the changes, the judiciary, the, the anti-corruption measures and everything that the European Union is willing to give to Armenia. Armenia is ready to make, to take everything and make uh, the necessary uh, changes. So this was a very important point that both parties now uh, have come to terms that Armenia, yes, it, it's, it has joined a new uh, international union, but at the same time, we'll go on with the European Union. And this uh, decision has been uh, respected by both parties and accepted by both parties. And uh, it's the popular opinion that uh, a lot of the um, implementation of your European values, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, uh, individual rights, human rights have regressed during the past two years uh, after somehow Armenia cut ties with EU. Was there an assessment on that? Uh, the main point uh, was that the that, uh, Republic of Armenia is working hard to go forward with all the changes uh, necessary. And uh, I must stress here that uh, there was a representative from the Venice uh, Commission uh, which uh, oversaw the uh, constitutional changes over the new constitution of Armenia. And she stressed that this is a very good and excellent work of art. It's a base for even more uh, rule of law in the country. And uh, of course, uh, she was very hopeful that it will be implemented. So in that sense, it was mentioned that Armenia is really breaking with its past and going on forward to more being a country of uh, where the rule of law will be respected as much as it should be, it needs to be done. Even though a lot of European countries and foreign diplomats in Armenia said after the referendum that it wasn't very democratic. And another question that usually is of interest, uh, how about uh, visa facilitation with Armenia? That's one subject matter that a lot of Armenians are interested in. Is that in progress? Yes, that was discussed uh, as well, uh, and uh, negotiations are still going on. I must remind that uh, the Republic of Armenia in 2014, as of January 1st, it uh, waived the necessity of Europeans to have visas to go into Armenia. So Armenia lifted unilaterally the restriction or the visa request of Europeans to Armenia. And the negotiations are uh, still going on. And yes, this issue was discussed uh, in Strasbourg as well, and it's being discussed in other uh, fora, like uh, on ministerial uh, level. So we're looking uh, forward that Armenia soon, sometime soon, uh, for Armenia as well, uh, this visa liberalization uh, process uh, will be uh, implemented as well. And one last question, the situation in Karabakh on the front line has actually been in, in headlines for the last two months. There have been a lot of casualties and it seems to be unmonitorable. Um, was, that man was there a mention of that? Uh, yes, of course. And uh, there was uh, a few very strong and uh, very good points in the joint uh, statement uh, yesterday. Uh, yes, the European Union is very well aware of what's going on on the line of contact. And of course, uh, there was a, it was stressed that the EU will pay much more, uh, will show much more support uh, for the Nagorno-Karabakh uh, peace uh, process. And I must here mention that uh, there was a very, very strong message uh, to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, which, as you know, uh, we'll be uh, discussing uh, two resolutions uh, in Strasbourg on the 26th of uh, January, in three or four days uh, from, from now, uh, which are clearly drafted in Baku, in Azerbaijan. And uh, the European Parliament uh, even stressed in its resolution, in its joint statement yesterday, that uh, international European and international organizations, which are uh, willing to involve or to be uh, 
to make note of the Karabakh conflict should align their uh, rhetoric, their resolutions with the OSCE Minsk uh, groups. And uh, in that sense, I, I will go on. There was a paragraph as well on Nagorno-Karabakh, which stresses that the civil society of Nagorno-Karabakh should be considered and uh, should be invited to take part in uh, European exchange and mobility programs. And uh, in conclusion, one, uh, when, what is the next step? When is the next assembly? Uh, the next assembly will take place in Armenia in 2017. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Armenia uh, should continue with its uh, reforms uh, and the negotiations will go on with the European Union. In every part, I must state, uh, I must, uh, state that both parties, and especially the, the European uh, Commission and the Council of Europe, the, the representatives, uh, they were stressing that this phase of negotiations will be very fast and it will conclude soon because the main work has been done already in the past uh, five years with the association agreement and the DCFTA. So this should be a relatively uh, easy task, if I may say so, in the coming uh, year. So they are very hopeful that uh, this uh, process will be concluded within 2016 already. Thank you very much, Mr. Demirjian, and thank you for speaking with us. Uh, and for the, to the viewers, thank you for joining us.